Very, very Keith, what do you got in the world of uh, sports and music, sir? All right. Okay. Well, it's hard to fit in some of these uh, places. I wish I was shorter. Let's turn it over to Keith Porter. All right. <laughs> and uh, let's start off with sports, guys. Obviously, the big news uh, <laughs> men's and women's uh, basketball in the college vein. Uh, Jalen Suggs. Uh, man, just exciting, exciting stuff. Game-winning shot after UCLA tied it up with three seconds left. Yeah. And he hits a buzzer beater at half court to keep Gonzaga's uh, win streak going, undefeated, mm-hmm. and propel them into the championship game 93 to 90. Did you guys catch it? What you think? Yeah, pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's got to be one of the all-time Final Four games, uh, period. Right, so, something with Christian yeah. Leitner's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think stakes so. are high. That guy hit a huge shot, and boy, just a clutch performance. Well, yeah. Let me ask you a question, Skinner. Does it take away from it that when you see something like that and the place is packed with fans? Mm. No, I think the feat is just as big if as if the fans were there. Really? The stakes are the same, even though. Uh, the excitement is more obviously if I'm the fans about, were there. Man. Yeah, the excitement would have been through the roof. But can you imagine being those kids on on, on both teams, Gonzaga and also mm. UCLA, when that watching that ball from half court? Okay. Can you imagine the emotions for yeah. both those teams? And the uh, cool thing about it is, you, you know, a lot of uh, players get hyped a little bit. And they don't live up in the big games. This guy is is uh, Gonzaga's highest rated player ever. Mm-hmm. As far as projecting and going into the to the the NBA, mm-hmm. and to see him come through like that on the second biggest stage uh, is great. Of course, they're going to pl- they're playing Baylor tonight, uh, which is going to be really exciting. And of course, in the women's uh, Final Four, and I'm going to bring a question: uh, UConn, with uh, one of the best freshman players ever, lost to Arizona shockingly yeah. by, yeah. and I don't mean by a couple either. I think it was by ten. And then, of course, Arizona goes on to lose in the finals against Stanford. Stanford's always been in the Sweet 16, Final Four, Elite Eight, but hasn't won a championship since 1992. Uh, they win this one, and I mean by the Skinner or T, 66-65. Congratulations to them. Guys, we see Stanford win the uh, women's championship. We've got Gonzaga and Baylor. Of course, we've heard Gonzaga's name over the years, but there's mm-hmm. no North Carolina, there's no Duke, there's no Kansas, uh, so on and so on. Are we seeing a turning of the guard in men's and women's sports, or is this just because we are in an odd time, these lingering effects of COVID? Well, I think the women's game is certainly different than the men's game because the women's game, they're going to stay in school longer, I, th- I think. I don't know the eligibility for the WNBA, but – I think there's more advantages mm-hmm. for them to – I heard a story on this the other day, which made a lot of sense to me. It's like that for them, they stay in school. They establish more of a brand and a, and well, a they following. Do. And, and UConn is a perfect example of that. They've been the most mm-hmm. dominant force for 20 years now, 30 years. But they yeah. have lost either in the Final Four or the championship in the last – I don't know. I can't remember the last time they won. So It's, it's just, probably been five years, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's good to see the talent move around. I think it's yeah, good. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I like Skinner? it. I agree with you. Um, I think it's a temporary thing when it with the with the men's basketball, because you got men's college basketball schools, you got men's football schools. Just like Duke is a basketball school, they're not a football school, even though they got a decent football team. Uh-huh. So these kids that are playing basketball, they know what teams to go to that yeah. they're going to have the most exposure. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that's going to change. I think because Duke couldn't play because of COVID and uh, Kentucky, they had a down year, and I don't even know if they would have made the the final the to sixty four right. if they even were eligible. But um, of North Carolina's got a new coach now, Hubert Davis. Yeah, yeah. Kansas was a fluke that they didn't make it. I think they just had a down year. I look for all those guys back next year, truthfully. Okay, right. All right, uh, NFL news real quick. Uh, Sam Darnold, uh, thought to be the savior of the New York Jets, according to Barry. (laughs) 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 All right, right. anyway, uh, he's moved to the Carolina Panthers now, and uh, the Jets got three picks from it, man. Do you think Darnold is going to prosper in a newer situation? 
or he's just not all he was cracked up to be. He didn't have a whole lot to work with in New York. Nothing really. at all. You know, so we'll see what happens. And this will be his opportunity to, and he's probably excited for this, I would imagine. So it's a yeah. good opportunity for him. Now, if he, you know, we've seen this a hundred times plus. If he falters as a starter in Carolina, then he's probably going back to a, a backup role or something like that. Yeah. So this is this is his opportunity. But yeah, and then certainly New York now, a lot of talk around, are they going to draft a quarterback? Well, certainly they are now. Yeah, right? absolutely. So no, no question. question about that. So, yeah, I mean, it's good for him, I think, in the long run. Skinner, yeah. do you think he went to a better team? Is he going to prosper there or what? Oh, I think he definitely went to a better team. Jets, yeah. they're just awful, and they've yeah. been awful for how many years? He's had no weapons on the offense. Um, Carolina at least has a decent offense. Their their defense is still suspect, and we talked a lot about that in our other show. Mm-hmm. Um, Carolina hasn't been the same since uh, – uh, Mr. Patriot, uh, right. at the left, um, Cal, Cam Newton, um, yeah. Cam Newton rather. And even then they had one or two good years and they'd just been a, a, a competitive team, but not a world championship team. Uh, jets to get three picks, uh, out of them. I think they did well with that. Um, yeah. and I think they showed their cars that are definitely drafting. Yeah. I hope quarterback. Both teams- both teams make out from it. Okay, guys, keep your answers real short for me. Uh, Aaron Rodgers will be hosting Jeopardy. Also made a statement that that is his second dream job. He'd like to be the permanent host of Jeopardy when he retires. Jeopardy is my favorite game show of all time. I like things that uh, that, that stretch the brain. Um, I learn from. Um, yeah. I don't like guessing games. I'm a big, huge Jeopardy. Guys, what are one of your favorite uh, game shows from the past that are either still going or, or no longer on? Fish? The game show of my youth, Bob Barker hosting Price is Right. Mm-hmm. Great, great stuff. I loved him as the host. That yeah. show symbolizes also being home with mom, watching Yeah, that absolutely. Show. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And if, if you'd absolutely. be sick, sick from school or something like that, yeah. you'd watch The Price is Right. You'd yeah. watch it in the great. summertime. That was great, great stuff. So as a kid growing up, but, yeah. I, but I agree with you, Jeopardy, as far as an overall fun game show. That and Wheel of Fortune's right there for me. But those, okay. that's an iconic I, I uh, long-term that, I show. That point, because you attach a, a feeling and emotion with that show. Yes. Great stuff. Skinner? Absolutely. Both good choices, fellas. I like both those shows. Mine is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Okay. Back when Regis Philbin started it. No, but let's go uh, back. Let's go back further than that. <laughs> well, to me, because I'm a I'm a trivia guy. Um, me and me and Fisher, nobody wants to play us in uh, in the <laughs> trivia games when oh, they put I'll us take, together. I'll we, be happy to. You, if they remember him, him and I, will clean house all the time. But um, you're on. We'll see about that. It's all you're right. on. Another, what was that? Woolery, Chuck Woolery. He was uh, um, it was a dating, dating game. game. Love, Love connection. connection. Love connection. You're back in two and two. Two and two. I, I used two to two watch two. that with my mom, and I would sit and, and like you, I had a feeling my mom would just sit and laugh, and I just remember watching my mom having a good time watching this show. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of had the same kind of lines, but yeah, Chuck Woolery to me, even as he moved on from other shows. I thought he was a pretty good show. Uh, he was good. Oh, yeah. The dating game was hilarious at times, some of the answers. But mm-hmm. I also enjoyed the Joker's Wow. You guys remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. If you haven't seen the movie 21, uh, watch that. It's about the, the game show uh, controversy that happened back in the day. True story. Excellent movie. Okay. Uh, By the way, did you, did you know that that's still going on, the Joker's Wow? Do you know who hosts it right now? Do you know this? Uh, is it Snoop Dogg? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. What the world is the world coming to? Anyway. Yeah, he's good. I see him once or twice. He's good. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, mm-hmm. guys, going on to music real quick. Uh, one of the big stories that just blew me away this week, this vile rapper by the name of Lil Nas had a huge hit a couple of years ago, uh, uh, dressed like a blue cowboy. And right now he's been promoting Satan shoes. Uh, they are supposedly were the, uh, Mike Nike Airbex nineties. Uh, Miley Cyrus was seen wearing them. Uh, these shoes have, they're, they're black with the bronze pentagram. An inverted cross Mm -hmm. and allegedly have 60 cc's of ink and one drop of human blood in them. 
What in the world is going on? Now, Nike has filed a class action lawsuit against them for brand infringement, saying mm-hmm. they had nothing to do with it. And uh, this this is just, wow. I don't even know what to say. Skinner? You trying to touch on the story before we got on the air, and I just appalled. I don't know what are the word, appalled by that whole situation. I don't know the individual. I don't know that, that his brand or anything like that. But if that's what our kids are looking at and looking up to today, we're in a world of hurt. We are in a world of hurt. You know, you can have Satan shoes out, but don't mention the word Jesus in schools. Or people lose their, their, their mind on it. I don't know what's going on. Skinner, I mean, fish. Where do you get a pair? <laughs> <laughs> no. I it, Honestly, I it's like, you, were gonna see like that. you know, it's like the, the reason they put that out there is this very thing. It's just so he gets people talking about it. That's it. We, we mean, we grew up with hair metal bands like Motley Crue for crying out loud with a right. pentagram and, and they, they weren't into Satan. They just like, this is going to rile up people. It's going to get people talking about us. It's a, to me, it's the same I type agree. of concept. I agree That's it. and disagree. I agree about Motley Crue, but mm-hmm. I think this is something deeper with this guy. And that's from my own study of him. We'll talk yeah. about it at another time. This okay. is beyond more than his promotion. Okay, right. guys. Uh, one of the old school, not old, old school, but one of the old school rappers, one of my personal favorites from the day, mm-hmm. uh, DMX. I just thought he had a unique voice, unique approach with his music. And, Oh, she, oh, make me lose my mind. Oh, uh, he's in a White Plains, New York hospital in critical condition. They're not saying very, very, very much about it. They actually respect the privacy. Um, mm-hmm. well, certainly our prayers for him and his health and recovery. Uh, DMX, man, just a, a pioneer in rap. Guys, what rappers do you guys remember from back in the day? And I'm going to just start the floor clean right now and say, don't mention the fat boys. Oh, I was like, oh yeah. darn it. I love the fat boys, and I know Fisher was going to bring them up. So anybody but the fat boys. Go ahead, Fish. I it, uh, I liked some of Young MC stuff. I like Run DMC, yeah. you know, if they're, and then I like uh, you know, the Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys to me, that's that took it to another level with those guys. You know, just it was not. It was just interesting to see white guys with that type of talent doing that. That and, level and, of music. And you know what? So that's just me. That album was as much as yeah. I loved it. I think the Beastie Boys are horrible rappers. Yeah. Horrible yeah. rappers. But yeah, that that's was, our music was fantastic. Album, just and just we unique music. More, and that album permeated the high school. It was oh music. sure, sure did. Um, I'm not much into the rap scene, especially since 1995, probably. I'm just talking about back uh, to go back. To old school, I listen to a lot of Dre, a lot of Snoop Dogg. Well, see, that's not um, old school. I'm talking about way back when we were kids. Way back, kids run DMC. That's who I remember. Absolutely, everybody. Knows, um, yeah, yeah, and the Beastie Boys. Those were probably my two favorites. Okay. Uh, like you said, Beastie Boys. They didn't rap very well, but their music was phenomenal. Yeah, well, you know, of course, I think the the reason why we all love the Beastie Boys so much, we all have a heavy metal background, and they brought mm-hmm. in the distorted guitar. Yeah, with their mm-hmm. music and that appealed to us. There was the, the the collaboration which brought two cultures, if you will, together. I thought that was right. great. Of course, Run DMC did the same thing with uh, Rock Bach, King of Rock, and then of course mm-hmm. later on to cover the Aerosmith Rock uh, Walk This Way song. Yep. Uh, if you want to go old school, the first rap album, uh, still one of my favorites, uh, Sugar Hill Gang. And then uh, the one mm-hmm. that came after that was Eighth Wonder. I still love that song to this day. Grandmaster Flash. And in my opinion, the greatest rapper ever uh, was, um, really? I can't even think of his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric B. Eric okay. B and Rakim. Rakim, I think, is the best rapper <clears throat> ever. Uh, and believe it or not, along with Eminem, I think they're the, he's the best rapper ever as far as skill. Uh, and, of course, Tretch from uh, Naughty by Nature. But yeah, I I I loved Run, uh, Run DMC when they came along, and and even some of the girls that came along too, man. I thought were really really good. People don't forget Queen Latifah started off as a rapper. Sure. And, uh, she mm-hmm. up today. Okay, guys, I'm gonna close up here with one funny subject. If you guys got a Google uh, uh, application handy to you, uh, if you type in the 50 most popular women in the world. Go look down at number seven and tell me who do you see and what do you think about that? 
Well, I don't have it available, but I can only imagine who you're talking I, about. It uh, looks like uh, Fisher's looking. So go ahead, Skitter. You go ahead and guess and tell me who you think's in there. Um, I, I think Oprah's got to be in there. Okay. Uh, in the top five. Okay. Um, Jennifer nope. Aniston, who no, we talked I, about I, earlier. No, I only want to know who number seven is. Just one person. Oh, number seven. What? Number seven most popular woman <laughs> in the world. <laughs> you're not even close, Skinner. I got it right here. Tell us, Fish. Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's funny stuff right there. I saw that on TikTok, and I was like, what the heck is going on with that? What are they trying to tell us? Yeah, it's it's the second time in a week. Oh, never mind. He's got he's got he's been accused of not knowing the meat. Okay, never mind. So it's something. Yeah, but that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. What a way to end the show on. <laughs> All right, fellas. why is that? People think he sounds like a woman when he sings. Is that that must be? I, that's it, right? what I wanted to know, guys. I don't know. Nah, I huh. I got nothing. Well, we are up against it, guys. Uh, great show again. Um, appreciate your candor and all the subject matter. Uh, folks, to get all our information, go to our Facebook page and put in at it came from Gen X, all one word. You'll get all of our all of our TikTok and, and YouTube and everything out there, WMVU.org. Uh, so for Keith Porter, Brian Fisher, and our comrade in arms who made a special appearance. Well, we're so uh, lucky. John Coach Cooper. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I am Michael Skinner. Thank you, and have a great week. Hey, I'm going to the gym, Fish. Come on, man. <laughs> and we're out. Okay.